Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today I want to make a pin without a lathe and I want to show how it is fairly simple to make this without a lathe. You don't need a big lathe if you want to turn out a pin and these come pretty quickly. With just a simple thing like a plane, a handsaw, and a drill, uh, you can turn out one of these too. They're not that difficult and they don't take that much time. So let's dive in and take a look at how to make this without a lathe. Let's make ourselves a pin. Now, first thing I want to do is actually test to make sure that the hole for the brass shaft uh, is the right size. And so I have several bits that are close to it. I, I One of these days I should go out and buy the actual approved bit that is a specific weirdo size. But I find just testing it and getting it close gets me basically what I need. I would like to have one in between the two sizes that I have, but uh, this one is close enough that if I lather it up with a good bit of gel epoxy, it works really well. Not a gel super glue, not epoxy. <laughs> And so the next thing I want to do is create the blanks and uh, rather than making it out of one long three quarter inch blank I'm going to make it out of a couple smaller ones because I have this scrap of paduke and I just love the bright red color on this especially with the sawdust coming off it it's absolutely gorgeous and paduke is an incredibly hard wood uh, and if you work with the grain it, it works really nicely but if you're going against the grain it is incredibly tough stuff uh, it has a very high silicon content so it will dull tools very quickly so I was originally going to rip it all the way down, and I thought, no, I'm going to save this little T-shape. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I'll turn it into some sort of like a depth gauge or something like that in the future. But for right now, we're just going to uh, get out these two little blocks from it. And here you can see how these will be the two halves of the pin, and each one will get this uh, brass insert that the pin kit then fits into. So now we need to drill the hole for the brass insert. And this is where people really get bent out of shape of, oh no, it's gotta be absolutely perfectly straight all the way down. Uh, no, we're actually gonna be shaping it. And as long as you are fairly close, you're, you're good enough. And if I check it from one angle and then check it from the other angle, I can get it pretty darn close. And I'm gonna be taking off a good bit of material. So even if I'm you know an eighth inch away from one of the sides, uh, it's still okay. I'm going to be using 2P10 uh, Gel CA, um, Cyanoacrylate, and it just glops in there, and the, the gel helps to fill any gap, and then because the hole isn't quite the size I'd want it to be, I'd like it to actually be a little bit tighter, but this will work, and so you can see how it actually kind of slides in there a little bit looser than I would like. But oh well, it works. And uh, it works rather well still. Next thing I need to do is actually t uh, see the size that it needs to be. And you can see this is the one where I was a little off center. I wasn't exactly straight on, but well within what I need to be. I draw that circle on both ends, and then we can start planing it down. And I want to plane it down to square, and I'm going to plane it until one of the flat edges just touches the outside of that circle. And then I'll rotate it 180 degrees and then plane the other side down until it just touches that circle. And as long as I get a straight line from one side to the other, where it just touches the circle on both edges, I know I have a nice straight line all the way across. So we did two sides, now we need to turn it and do another side. And I, I found that actually putting the rod through the hole and then leveling out the rod actually worked really well to level this out so then I was planing parallel to the bench. So even if I wasn't planing exactly uh, the same angle as the block, I was still planing to the line that I needed to so I'd be running parallel with the brass shaft, not parallel with the outside of the wood. So we're taking these down to squares and bringing each side down to just outside that line we drew. You can see how we're getting really close. And I love Paduke once you, when you have a sharp blade, it leaves with a really nice glossy surface if you go in with the grain. Now we have squares, and I want to take off these corners and turn them into an octagon. Stop signs. And uh, I could go ahead and outline these all, but what I'm going to do is the exact same thing I did before, and I'm just going to plane it down until the plane reaches just to the edge of the line that I drew. And so it's, you know, 10, 15 passes per corner, and I've got a side on there. And I can rotate it 90 degrees and do it again, and rotate 90 degrees and do it again, and then a fourth time, and suddenly we have this octagon, and it's like, ooh, okay, that's really easy. And it becomes very apparent if one side needs a little bit more material taken off or a little bit less. This is actually a really easy thing to do by eye, um, as long as you're, you're you're vigilant and you're actually watching the line and not letting things go too far. This actually works really well. Then pinching it between these two dogs actually uh, works uh, fairly well. I'm, I'm thinking about actually making uh, modified dogs with centering pins. 
so that I can do things like this in the future where there's actually a pin that goes inside and holds it in. Uh, particularly for the pencils that I just did, that would actually work really well. And for some small detail things that would, that would help out. But for me, I'm just going to hold it between these two dogs and go until I get right down to that line. And there we go. There's an Octeon. We have these both shaped out. Now the last thing I need to do is taper the ends so that they taper down to the ferrule and the tip. And for that, I'm actually just going to roll the corner on a file and round off the end. So basically like doing a pencil sharpener. So you can see how it ends up being right there. It's rounded right at the edge, and it matches the rounded ferrule or the rounded head. And so I can check it up against the piece, make sure it's good, and then go back and adjust it anywhere it needs to be. Then finally, I'm going to come through with a really fine file and just clean up the surface and smooth it down, make sure it's ready for finish. Now, for the finish on this, I'm actually going to be using a shellac. Um, I was going to do boiled linseed oil, but I, I want to do something with a little bit more of a protective finish. I want some, something more like a gloss. A lot of people expect a pen to have a very glossy surface. Um, and that's mostly because a lot of people finish them with a CA glue. And it gives a really nice protective finish. Um, but I don't want to polish with CA because I'm not on a lathe. And shellac actually does a really similar look. Uh, although it leaves a little bit more of the wood as long as you don't coat it too hard. Now I could do like a French polish and really get these shiny, but I find as long as I hold them in place with the zip tie and uh, let them um, air dry, they, they come out with a pretty nice surface. Next we need to press in all the pieces. We put the tip on and I, I use a little sque squeeze clamp to lock them in. Just have to be very careful that nothing binds, otherwise it will break the wood and bust out the tube, which I've seen done a few times. I'm actually going to check it, make sure that everything is there. I'm not going to push it all together really tight. Uh, I'm not going to push it all the way until I, I've checked it because I want the tip to be coming out just the right amount. Uh, so I push it in a little bit, test it, push it in a little bit, test it until I get exactly where it needs to be. There is a line on there, but I never really trusted that line. And there we go, a pin. Not that hard and a really quick and easy project, especially if you have a gift you want to give to someone. It makes a very, very happy time and a good way to get a quick win in the shop. And, ooh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with this thing. So there you have it. I, I, I've made this design several times in the past, and it's one of my favorites, uh, especially with the, with the eight sides. It's incredibly comfortable. It fits the fingers nicely. You have a facet that fits on either side of your hand. Um, so it's, it's a very comfortable pin, and I just like the look. It's, it's very different. You put this beside all the other pins that have been turned, and it just stands out. It's different, and the octagonal shape just uh, looks Nice, I like that. Now all told, this took me about 45 minutes to an hour to make, and if I were making a bunch of them, I probably could batch them out and do them in like a half hour's worth of work for each individual pin. So they're not that difficult at all, and you buy them with a cheap pin kit, um, you can get a nice pin out of it, and I'm really happy. I've got a bunch of these, and I'm looking forward to using this one too. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let me know down below. Also let me know if you have any other ideas or something you'd like me to do. I'd love to read those. If you did like the video, please hit like, please comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all those things really do help out the channel. That means a lot to me personally. Thank you for that. So I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Yeah, you saw this one coming. A pencil last week, this week a pen, and next week a marker.